now I'm about to do me a meatloaf in here. I got to get this thing going. Um, I'm going to do a meatloaf with some mashed potatoes, some homemade mashed potatoes, and some kind of vegetable. I'm not really sure yet. I don't know what's going on with this camera. The last couple of times I used my camera, and when I came back and looked at it, it was all screwed around. So don't quote me on what's going on with this, because I don't know what that's all about. So last night what I did was I seasoned up my meat and everything for my um for my meatloaf. I did that all last night. Um, well, not all last night, but I did that last night and I put it in a container. Because a lot of times when you have meat, if you season it the night before, the season sits into your meat real good. So I got my little glass dish out. I got my meat here. I'm going to refashion my little meatloaf around in the bottom of this pan. Uh, this is going to be a big ass meatloaf too. A huge one. Um, but that's what it's going to be folks. I may got everything off. And y'all know what I like to do. I normally like to do like a, uh, uh, I usually do like an Italian sauce over the top of it some parmesan cheese and stuff like that i'm not doing that today today i'm going to do like a gravy i'm just going to do a regular a gravy i'm not going to do like the um spaghetti sauce i want something different today so i'm gonna do like a brown gravy um and yes i'm gonna cook it and i'm gonna pour over top of my meatloaf so that it can cook in the oven with the meatloaf. It's going to be a nice old big meatloaf here. Because I'm using about 5 pounds of ground beef here. And I told y'all I had got that ground beef on sale. And something else I did again today y'all. I didn't take no damn lunch. My job had gave us some, some bagels. Every Monday seemed like we get bagels. Because um, we hit whatever numbers it is that they wanted us to hit. So they be having bagels and cream cheese and stuff like that. And I didn't bring no lunch today. But thank goodness for them bagels. Because I didn't feel like going out and getting nothing. Because I knew I was coming home and making this meatloaf. Um, so what I'm going to do is make me a gravy here. To go over top of this meatloaf. Like I said, I normally do a spaghetti type thing. I'm not doing that today. I'm going to do a brown gravy. Because I just don't want... For some reason, I just don't want no... Uh, I don't want no spaghetti sauce. Um... See, they got the meat all in the pan. I did my seasoning and everything last night. Um, I got my potatoes on. Some for some homemade mashed potatoes. Uh, I'll probably do some greens or some string beans or something like that. But what I'm going to do is cut up an onion. I'm going to put the onion past the top of it. And I'm going to make a homemade gravy. Now, Notice, you know, the other day, now y'all know, I swear by Vidalia onions, right? I swear by them. I always tell y'all, get y'all some Vidalia onions. Well, the other day when I had was shopping, I didn't go to the store that I normally get my Vidalia onions from, and I got some white onions. Don't like them, okay? Don't like them. Hate them. But, I'm going to cut them up. And put them on across the top of my meatloaf. Because I like onions and gravy. So I got these white onions. And I just... They ain't sitting right with me. Probably because I got so used to, you know, the Vidalia onions. And I got my cornstarch. And I'm going to make take and make me some... Some regular gravy. But that's what I like to do. And I'm going to put a gravy over top of the meatloaf. Like I normally do the sauce. 
I pour the sauce over top. The spaghetti sauce, I'm going to do like the gravy over top. I'm going to really show y'all what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some starch. And um, right now I'm going to get these onions and I'm going to... Yeah, let me show y'all these white onions. These are these white onions that I've been using. And I got some red ones. So anyway, I'm going to take some of this cornstarch. I use that Argo cornstarch. I'm going to use some beef bouillon cubes. I'm going to make that. Crush up a couple of them. Make a little bit of a gravy. Got my onions. You know, my garlic and stuff like that. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead on. I'm going to get this meatloaf going. And um, I got to... Think of some stuff to talk about. Y'all ain't no fun. Because y'all don't be thinking the things y'all want to talk about. Y'all know shit got to strike me across my mind, honey. Because something get me across my mind. And I start to thinking about it. I get to talking about it. And then I goes on off on a tangent. But ain't nothing really been going across my mind lately. I'm glad all the kids is going back to school. My kids, my daughter rather. She been back to school for three weeks now. But these other kids are just going back to school today. So I just hope everybody have a good, successful school year and, you know, we don't have no problems. Got to pray over these kids and watch out. Uh, I always said I never allowed my children to be bullied and I never allowed them to bully anybody else. So you got to talk to your kids and you got to watch them and make sure that they're not being bullied. If their attitudes or their behavior start changing from what you're used to seeing, Dig into it. Keep asking and keep asking and keep asking. And tell them to let you know because too many of our children are dying. Hey, I'm, I'm trying to video and you got that music going. Because too many of those kids are dying, you know, or killing themselves or hurting themselves. And, you know, coming in schools and shooting schools up because they being bullied. So you got to talk to your children. Find out what's going on with them. And, you know, make sure that they're okay. Talk to them. Get in their business. I done told y'all about that. Honey, you got to get in your children's business. But see, my kids know. My kids ain't never been afraid to come and tell me if somebody was bothering them. Because they already know how I get down. <laughs> they already know. Honey, they already know. Mommy, don't play by hers, okay? And I don't play by mine fucking with nobody else's. But I definitely don't play by my kids. And I don't have no problem with going to get nobody's face about mine but I'm not going to have my child bullied period plain and simple as that so I never had a problem with my kids being afraid to tell me that somebody was doing something to them in school uh, because they already knew what it was about Oh, Ron, where was you at, honey, when I, you know, I got five mango trees in my yard, baby. Where was you at when it was mango season and I made a mango chutney? Oh, baby, you missed that, honey. I made a awesome mango chutney. Yeah, but the mangoes is gone out of season for right now, honey. And I mean, all my friends that's listening that I promised mangoes to, I wasn't quite hip on how fast the mango season goes. Once they sprout out and they kept coming every day like that, but when they gone, they gone till the next season. But I promise y'all that the next time mango season come around, I will not forget y'all. But yeah, I've got mango trees all in my backyard, Ron. And you got to go back through my video and look. Because I sure did do a mango chutney. And that mango chutney was some good, honey. I mean, that thing was good. And I poured it over a pork loin. Yes, baby. I'm here to tell you that thing was saying something. So you missed that one, boo. You missed that one. I, if I had known how fast, because, you know, this is the, I've always known about mangoes, but this is the first house that I've ever had that had mangoes in the backyard. And had I known that when the mangoes were gone, they were gone, I would have froze some of that mango chutney. I didn't realize that the season would be gone and I wouldn't be able to get any more mangoes. So, um... So, yes, honey. What would you say? Yeah, they not in season, boo. Once they gone, they gone, baby. And I didn't know that either. Because, like I said, this is the first time I've ever had a house that had mango.
mangoes in the backyard and I was just so overwhelmed with the amount of mangoes that were falling off the tree. I was just so tickled, honey. I mean, I was some kind of tickled about how the mangoes was falling off that tree and we were just getting tons and tons and tons of them and they fell off the damn tree and when they were gone, baby, they were gone. And yes, they were. Um, but they were really good. So what I got right now is I got my onions. I got this is my corn, my cornstarch. Um, those are a couple. I took like three uh, beef bouillon cubes and I crushed them up in there. And I'm going to make a thickening. And I'm going to put the onions over the top of the meatloaf. And then I'm going to pull the gravy over the top. And I'm going to bake the meatloaf. So we're going to already have gravy. So that's what I'm about to do right there. I'm going to right, turn my water on so my water can get warm. Because that's another thing you need to do when you make a gravy. Your gravy, your water should be warm. Because when you make cold water with it, it kind of makes it um, clumpy. And you don't ever want it to be clumpy. And, uh, of course, with cornstarch, because it's just a base... Unless you've got some essence in there, you can always use some browning. Get you some browning season that makes your gravy look brown. So I'm going to put all these onions on top of my meatloaf. And y'all know normally I do my meatloaf with a spaghetti base. Like an Italian sauce. But I figure I'll switch it up a little bit today. Put a bunch of chopped onions on top of here. Because... You know how you have hamburgers, rice and gravy, or meatloaf and gravy, or meat and hamburgers and gravy. So I'm just going to make my gravy from in here. Y'all caught me early today because Sans and I got some papers that we got to look for. And we got to go pull out. And everybody got one, that dreaded bin of papers. You know how you have that great big old bin of your personal papers and stuff that you stack and you put away? Well, we got a job. We got some papers that we got to look for that's very important. And so I told Sands when I get home, I'm going to throw dinner on. And then we're going to go and get that tote. And we got to go through there. And both of us got to look for these papers that we need. And I'm not looking forward to that. I'll tell you that right now. And I say, I'm not looking forward to it because although I told Sans he had to help, best believe it's going to be more me looking than him. Best believe it. So right now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for my, baby, you see my brownie? Uh, no. You know what I'm talking about? Don't turn that water off, Sans. I'm trying to I know, but it's hot. I need the water to stay hot for a second. So I don't need you to turn that water off. I can't find my browning. Um, did you just turn my water? God damn it, did you turn it off? You got him hot water? No, good water. It was going to be hot. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So. Yes, fresh onions and garlic is it, baby, right now. And I usually put peppers and all that stuff in it. I did, I even, can you believe it, Ron? Some of the folks that's I age, some of my sisters, you know they didn't know how to make homemade gravy. And I had to teach them how to make homemade gravy. You know I was through with them, don't you? Because they know goodness well when we was coming up that um, our mother and grandmother did not make gravy from a can. They made their gravy from scratch. So I was really surprised that some of my sisters that are our age that did not know how to make gravy. And it was a lot of them, and they wasn't ashamed to say it either. Yes, it was, Ron. It was a whole plethora of them sisters, honey, that did not know how to make gravy. Well, I swanny, like my mother used to say. My mother used to say, well, I swanny. I couldn't believe it. I said, are you really serious? Are you serious right now that you don't really know how to make a homemade gravy? Where they do that at? But I told them, 
how to make it. And a couple of them sent me videos and pictures and stuff of them making it. And they, they, they caught on pretty good. So, I never started this thing to do any type of teaching or anything like that. Just one day, God dang it, I put too much black pepper in here. Um, one day I happened to be on here. Something had really gotten on my nerves, had pissed me off pretty good. And I had to get on here and I was venting. And I guess me coming across the people, they liked the way I was talking. And they wanted me to keep coming on here. And then cooking is very therapeutic for me. So what I do is a lot of times when things are getting on my nerves or when I want my mind to be eased, I cook. So I don't have no browning. So this gravy going to come out tan skin, but it's still going to be good. Yes, homemade gravy is the best. So what I'm getting ready to do, I'm going to show you all these onions. I poured these onions over here in my meatloaf. I got my gravy, my thickening. I'm going to pour it down over top of the onions over the meatloaf. So when the meatloaf cooks, there's going to be a gravy. So my meatloaf will have a nice gravy. And I'm going to put this in the oven and let it cook. And my potatoes are done. Well, they're not done. I just actually turned them on. The potatoes, I just turned them on. So I'm going to put my meatloaf in the oven. Let that cook. And I don't want that to cook too fast. Although it don't take a lot for meatloaf, but I put it on 300. <laughs> Most things standard when you cook, you put it on 350, but I just put that on 300 because I don't want it to cook too fast. Um, Pam, you still teach them how to do homemade gravy too, huh? I know, girl, I'll tell you. Uh, girl, this dinner going to be done in a little bit. Because I don't know if you just heard me say that we got to go in that dreaded box of papers. We got some papers that we got to look for. Baby, come on, go get the tote out the garage and bring it in here. The clear one. The big clear one. The one with the uh, red top on it is the one that I believe that it's in. Um, and we can ready to sit down in this living room and we can ready to go through these papers, honey. And that is not going to be a pleasantry there. Because I am in no mood to be going through no damn papers today. But I don't have a choice. Because we really need these papers. And I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Because every household has one of those bins with all them papers in it. That you had your important papers in. And you got to go through them. And I probably got some things in there that I need to get rid of. But this is why I'm very skeptical about getting rid of certain things because you never know when I'm going to, when you're going to, something's going to come up and you're going to need that old piece of paper that you didn't think you was going to ever need. So I'm kind of glad that I do save some of the stuff that I save because this particular paper that I need is from a couple of years ago. And I'm pretty sure that I have it because when I was getting ready to throw it away, something came across me like, you're going to need this for something, so don't get rid of it. And I'm glad I didn't. Girl, please, every household in America got a tote, a tote with important papers in it, honey. Every, and I got quite a few. Did you hear Sands when I told him to go get the tote? He was like, which one? Because we got a couple of them out there, girl. So I'm telling him to go get the one with the red lid on it. But it may not even be that one. It might be the other one. But we're going to do one at a time because I can't have too many of them in here my, at one time, girl. I tell you. So I'm getting ready to get off of here and go ahead and handle my business. When my dinner is done, I promise you, before I cut or slice any meatloaf, I'm going to let y'all see how the gravy and everything turned out. Homemade garlic mashed potatoes is what it's going to be and probably some string beans or some uh, cat, uh, not cabbage, uh, broccoli or something like that. So listen here, y'all. I'm going to talk to y'all later from my kitchen to yours or wherever you may be. I holla.